Today is uh, an exciting and complicating day on the Jewish calendar. For those who don't already know, today is Yom Yerushalayim. Today is Jerusalem Day. It marks the day on this, uh, in 1967 when Jerusalem was reunified. And that's a very, very important part of Jewish history because until then, we couldn't go back to the Jewish quarter of the old city. The way that it's marked today, however, is very complicated. Because of Israeli politics and society, really those who mark Jerusalem Day, Yom Yerushalayim, do so um, as a protest, as a political statement. But uh, I wanted to connect Yom Yerushalayim to this week's Torah portion, this week's Parsha, Bamidbar. So, let me simply uh, do a few things first. One of them is there is a journalist um, with a keen and sensitive eye who I have turned to for clarity on moments like these, Chaviv Retig Gur, who is one of the best journalists in Israel today, um, eloquent and sensitive, uh, really attuned, I think, um, to history as he reflects on the current moment. So I can't recommend him highly enough. He has a very interesting analysis on the history of uh, Jerusalem Day, Yom Yerushalayim, that he just published today on the Times of Israel. I recommend that article very, very highly. Perhaps a colleague of mine will post it while I make this comment. Imagine, imagine friends, that we were in the desert itself. This is Parshat Bamidbar, which means in the desert. Part of the generation born in the desert, because we're in the desert for 40 years. And we're told explicitly in the text that because of who we were upon immediate liberation from Egypt, that would not be the generation that would enter into the Promised Land. It was actually at the Golden Calf when we demonstrated how vulnerable we were, and of course remain as human beings, but having been so recently enslaved, we would not have had the mentality to... Uh, endure and enter into the land and ultimately make it our home, which involves conquering another people or other peoples. That has very modern echoes, but imagine being that generation that walked across the Jordan for the very first time. What would have been the emotional experience of walking across the Jordan that very first time? I'm very grateful. I see a colleague posted the article that I mentioned. Thank you. Um, imagine you were that first person to set foot in the promised land that had been promised to your ancestors and your ancestors' ancestors, a place where Abraham walked. Suddenly you were able to go back to, after all of the ancestors that dreamt of it. Well, the image, these classic images in 1967 of Israeli soldiers standing for the first time again in the old city of Jerusalem, where once our ancestors connected with God and each other, where once we suffer terribly as the very stones burned. The emotional experience of standing there and blowing shofar must have been one of being overwhelmed, not of triumph necessarily, but of course, some feeling of victory, but more than that, a feeling of relief. We made it. We get to go home again. The founding of Israel is something that is ongoing. We are always finding Israel and refinding ourselves. 1948 was not the birth of Zionism, and Zionism was not the birth of the yearning for Zion, for Zion, for Jerusalem. For thousands of years, our people has said at the end of every Pesach Seder, L'shana haba'a b'Yerushalayim, this coming year, next year in Jerusalem. And every end of Yom Kippur, at least from my childhood, we sing L'shana haba'a b'Yerushalayim. At holy moments, we yearn for this place, and we still do, though we already have it. What does that mean? It means that we should not see ourselves on Yerushalayim Yom Yerushalayim, Jerusalem Reunification Day. We should not see ourselves as owners of our destiny and we are done building it. Owners of our destiny and the only ones with a right to self-determination. We should see ourselves as we did on that day in 1967, relieved, in awe, in shock, in reverence. We committed 
in Megillat HaTzma'ut, the Israeli Declaration of Independence, to treating with respect the holy sites of every people and faith. That is a complicated thing, isn't it? It's our responsibility now. Are we doing it well? Are we doing it right? When we were wandering <clears throat> through the desert for 40 years, could we possibly have imagined how hard it would be to build a home again? We were at war with each other as ancient tribes. The Israeli flag that we have been so proud to see, I have been so proud to see, in all of the protests over the last 18 plus weeks, the Israeli flag carried with pride and determination by every side of the political divide, means that we all believe we are building our home. That is hard to do, but the Israeli flag should never be used as a weapon against others. Yom Yerushalayim today is experienced by non-Jewish residents of Jerusalem as a very threatening day. The Israeli flag should never be seen as a threatening presence. It should be a symbol of tribal identity and universal commitment. We are the descendants of our ancestors. We have been wandering a very long time. We wandered for 40 years in the desert, and after the second exile from Jerusalem, we wandered for 2,000 years until we made our home our home once more, that continued through the surprising, miraculous victory in 1967 that continues today, friends. The work of building our homeland continues, soulfully, physically. So I hope that you will see today as an opportunity to revisit the history of our people and to continue building it. I am, as Deborah just wrote, so grateful for Israel. The first time you touched the Kotel was 1970, just three years after the Six-Day War. The first time I touched the Kotel was 1992, many years after that. I was born into a world that knew, that knew all of Jerusalem is home. I was born into that world. I dare not take it for granted. So friends, I'm going to ask you, for those of us who were old enough to remember where we were in 1967, how did it feel then? How did it feel? It's a complicated history to tell. It's a complicated moment to experience. But just as our ancestors in the desert had a wandering experience that must have made them so overwhelmed and grateful just to set foot on the other side of the Jordan for the first time, we made it. We're okay. What an amazing, amazing feeling it is to make it. So bless the state of Israel, friends. May God bless Yerushalayim. May God bless all of the people who call our holy homeland home. May we remember to be sensitive and kind as we continue building our home. May we be overwhelmed with gratitude for that responsibility. Here we go, friends. Happy Yom Yerushalayim.
Take care, friends. See you tomorrow.